Today we're with the Gralla Harriers in East Galway, outside Loch Ray. Uh, the Gralla Harriers would be a small family pack. It was formed about 2007 by the Burke family. David actually founded the, the hunt, and yes. as I say, it's very much a family, family type hunt. I mean, uh, David spent his time show jumping in his younger days, and uh, not so, young, and not so young. younger days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and Frank, his father, was a very well-known show jumper and hunter with the Blazers as well. Frank would have produced hundreds and hundreds of horses over the years. The Irish horse, what's special about them? Well, I always say about the Irish horse, they start later and they go on for longer. Start later and yeah, go on for longer? Yeah, go on for longer. Yeah. I always thought that we are always a bit, a bit like the Irish, we're slow to set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two Olympians, and yeah. you were the producer of the horses that would have gone on uh, to international level Definitely, as well. And, yeah, and yeah. national level. I mean, Clonley Temple is a local one that we all talk about that John Whitaker had. Um, and that was a Chester mare who was a bit of a madam to start with, but Dad hunted her, and then she kind of turned the corner and she turned into to be a right good show jumper, and John Whitaker had her as his speed horse around the time that he had Milton. Oh, Milton, the big grey so, horse. The big grey, yeah. yeah. So that was his kind of two at that yeah. time. And so, Milton jumped puissance as well. He did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was good. We meet the famous Willie Leahy this morning, and Willie has been field master of the Galway Blazers for many, many, many years. Willie would uh, have been a great promoter of the Irish Hunter uh, over the years, would have uh, provided customers all over the world uh, with Irish Hunters and with Connemara ponies. But he would have the biggest herd of Connemara ponies in the world, really, uh, between Connemara and Hare. Just tell us from the beginning, your, your first hunter, I think it was Dan, was it? The first hunter was Dan. I started very small. I started with one horse when I was 10 years of age and went to the uncle and bought a horse uh, he, he had this mare and foal and he said you should buy that foal off me and I said I can't have no money he says go home and tell your father and so anyway I said how much of the foal be and he said the foal be 10 pounds so I came home and told the father the father didn't have 10 pounds but I kept begging him and craving him anyway and eventually he agreed so I bought the first house for 10 pounds I brought him home with a bag on his back in the month of October on my own give us your philosophy there no, every time I'd sell one horse I'd buy two and that kept on and on for years until I have so many as, as I can do it. I like now, yeah. that way. Yeah. Which is great. Horses have been so good to me, it's unreal. Yeah. Very few people in the whole world that say horses can, can be that good to them. Like, you know, people usually get broke having horses. I happen to get a, a little bit better off. Yeah, horses. a little bit better off. <laughs> You've been very modest, yeah? <laughs> no, there's one thing I'd like to say about Willie. I haven't known him all my life now. I always think of Rudyard Kipling when I think of Willie. He made one famous statement. To have dined with kings and to have maintained the common touch is a sign of a great man. That's a very nice compliment. And that's the man, that's him. Yeah. Best friend ever I had. Now, Willie wouldn't be the best of putting on a stock. I am the best. Um, <laughs> I am the but best. see, he wrapped it around twice. Nobody, not, I bet you, you look at any other stock of this place, there'll be no one with a stock on as good as this. Okay, let's go, and we'll see. Yeah, one, one knot. I am the best. And then he'll put a second knot in, wrap around again. Well, yeah, I didn't think you could try tie a stock. I only like tie a stock. I never went to a hunt yet with the wrong stock, and I'm looking. I bet you if you look around there, there's every one of those people that don't, that don't have a stock tie wrong, and it's a nice me every time I see them. Nice piece. Yeah, yeah. Normally you'd have a button here, but Declan must have lost the button on the shirt. Too many times in the washroom. Maybe his neck, maybe his neck got a bit bigger. Or something like that. Well, he's using his hunting whip here. So uh, that's a uh, deer antler, uh, and the shape of it is like that because uh, if he needs to pull a gate back. Uh, when he's hunting, he can pull it back with the handle as such there. And then you have what we call the lash. That's the lash. And it's not to hit a hound, it's just to, to hold out. And hounds will tuck in behind when you just hold it, hold it out like that. Over, boys. Be over. Heck, 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 heck. Get over. Be over. Be over. Heck, 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 heck. Good girl. Heck, heck. No, that's fine. That's brilliant.
Uh, just your view on what hunting does for some of these young horses. Uh, would some of those horses have hunted as well? They all would have hunted. With us, when they get broken in, like the first thing they do is go hunting. You know, it just makes them that more steady and makes them more, you know, Korean. sensible. Yeah, and, and they get this boldness, you know, yeah. they love it. Yeah. You know, so, uh, and it gets them to mind their, mind their feet, mind their legs, and as you know, they find their fifth leg, which is essential. Yeah. <laughs> Especially yeah. when the riders wouldn't be so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Galway is associated with limestone walls and we've seen plenty of limestone walls and saw the horses crossing them. But here as well you have hedges. Probably starts with briars here but unusual to have hedges like that there. Uh, so you've got a mixture, a great challenge for, uh, for an Irish hunter uh, to have both hedges and, uh, and stone walls. When I was younger you had to qualify horses for point to point. So you had your thoroughbreds and they had to hunt five times before they got their hunt certificate. So this was perfect country for a potential pointer pointer. Not alone were the jumping stone walls, but that hedges, which are kind of very similar to national hunt fences. But national hunt got its origins in hunting because uh, the first national hunt was in the 18th, uh, the race was in the 18th century in, uh, from Buttevin to Donnerail. And uh, two hunting people took each other on uh, over across country from steeple to steeple. That's where steeple chasing got its name. Uh, a race from one steeple of a church to another steeple of a church. And it's been reenacted in Ireland on numerous occasions since. So perfect country for, for schooling potential national hunt horses. This is Bernie. I don't know. This is Alan. I'll just for the road end. Okay, sure. Oh, will I get my Christmas card? You catch the eye of the horse there, Ken. See the way he's, he's, he's using the eye there and the ears. <coughs>
David is just calling a couple of holes there that have yet just to cross and uh, he just called the, the rest of them up so he gets the full pack together again. So that's a call, it's the short, short blast on the hunting horn and they recognise us just to call them, call them back. Yeah? The other thing that does as well when he's walking like that, it just relaxes the hounds as well before they go back. Now what David is blowing on the hunting horn is going home. And uh, we've heard him blow gone away. We've heard him call hounds out. But going home is a slow type uh, refrain on the hunting horn. And the followers know at that stage that the hunt is over and uh, they're just hacking back to the meat again.